I get a lot of questions about doing a little bit of a classroom tour, and so I'm gonna try that today. So for background context, I'm a K-5 behavioral special education teacher. I have some kids that are in the regular ed classroom most of the day, and they come down for intervention times or calm down breaks. And then I have some kids that work in my classroom all day, and they're gradually working their way back to the classroom, depending on their behavior plan that they have. If you were to categorize my classroom, I feel like it's different in every state and every area, but I would say I have some kids that are more like resource room kids and some kids that are more self-contained kids. So it's kind of like a mixture of both and I love that. So let's do a classroom tour. This is a non-picked up at the end of the day classroom tour. Here's an overview of what my classroom looks like, just to kind of get a feel for the space that's here. And then I have these really nice windows and I love natural lighting, so I'm obsessed with this. This is the view of my classroom when you walk into my classroom. I have an individual student workspace right here. I always keep this table by the door. This could just be an extra workspace. It also works as a proactive measure if I have kids that might potentially try to elope because an adult could sit right there. Here is another student work area. This is one of our calm down areas. I often have bean bags and blankets and things over here. This is often another student workspace. They use this little thing as a desk. Then if I walk over here, this is another student workspace. I'm so lucky because I also have a bathroom in my classroom. So this is a nice sized bathroom. I'll turn the light on so you can see it. And they just fixed my fan so it's not like rattling anymore. So very thankful for that. This is kind of where I do my main interventions and in teaching. This is our community supply cart, so kids can use anything off of this cart when they need it. These are all of my mentor texts, and then in these little areas up here, I have coloring books, calm down books, and then I also have like think sheets and stuff up there. All of these binders are different like binders that I put together with curriculum in them. This up here is honestly just all chaos, and I'm working on organizing all this, so pretend like it looks organized. This is where I do all of my student group work. So all of my different groups have a different drawer and that way I can just keep whatever it is they're working on directly in the drawer. One of the best things that I did was create these little tags on it and I put them in chronological order. So my 830 group would be here, my 845 group would be here, my nine group would be here and they just go in order all the way until the end of the day. I also make all of these labels Velcro. So if I move them around or I need to change it out, it's easy to just take off and put onto a different bin. I use these drawers to help keep me organized. I'm gonna create little organizers over here that says like, organize today, organize eventually, or something like that, so stay tuned. This area is where I keep a ton of my resources that I often use with kids. So on this top shelf, this is all of my social emotional learning resources, mindfulness breaks, things like that. This next shelf has reading activities that I do for one of my reading groups and some sensory bins that we often use for reading groups or math groups. There's different activities that I keep in this little container that work with the sensory bins. This is where I keep my paperwork organization that I still have to organize. This next area is more like adapted resources. So I have music that we use for one of my groups. There's a bunch of adapted task boxes. These are all in my adapted drive folder. A bunch of adapted books also in my adapted drive folder and then just some other activities. These are more social emotional learning activities that have all of the individual like activities directly in the bin. So I just put them on another shelf. And then this bottom shelf is different reading activities and different math activities. All of the things that are stored out here change depending on what I'm doing with my groups. And then this is kind of like my teacher area. It's a little bit chaotic right now. This is my teacher cart. So this is where I store all of the stuff that I use for all of my teacher things. I do keep a fridge in my classroom because I have certain snacks and things in there for kids when they need them when they're hungry. And then normally I have my teacher planner and anything that I need to focus on on top of my fridge. Then this is kind of where I keep everything. We have our like group reward system up there, days of the week, calendar. I will do some different like problems and activities on the whiteboard if I need. I also have our lunch choices for the day, what our social skills schedule looks like. And then just like any markers or pens that I might need for the whiteboard or for my Promethean board. This is where I keep papers and a bunch of different coloring utensils that are not crayons. And then I also have um, sharpeners for pencils. And then we have these little alphabet kits that we use. So I keep those right up here. And then there are more like adapted hands-on activities, reading and math activities right below. I also always keep whiteboards and lap pads up here and clipboards in case kids need those. And then this area is kind of just like all of my books. These are more picture books that kids can pick from. These are my board books. This is a calm down area that I have in my classroom. And these are more chapter books that are organized by category. You'll notice that I have books over here and I also have books over here. 
Kids can check out any of these books whenever they want. The books that are over here are more like mentor text driven, so I use them for lessons. So kids have to ask about these books and using them or reading them prior to grabbing one from there. This is another student work area over here. Here are some of our seats that I have. I'm all about flexible seating. So I will take any cool seating options for kids whenever. This is my Ergo Ergo Wobble Seat. I get so many questions on this and my kids love it. I have that one and I also have a black one. I have another student work area right here. Um, I have these little I need a break cards everywhere where kids might take a break and they can identify how many minutes they need for a break. And then this room is what we call our blue room. We call it our blue room because you guessed it, it's blue. The thing I like about this room is there is a dimming switch for this so kids can choose the brightness that they want in there. And how I explain this to kids is this could be just like a separate work area. They could use it when they're feeling frustrated or like they need to get away from others. Sometimes kids feel like they need to hit things. So these walls are padded so it helps keep them safe if they feel like they need to hit something. If kids are really escalated and they're making not safe choices or they're doing things like spitting or peeing or different things like that, the floor is rubber so it cleans up super well. This room is a space that many of my kids like to use because it's so much quieter. So when there is chaos going on out here and they're feeling overwhelmed or like it's too noisy and they just need to get away from people, they really like this room. And so I actually made a sheet <laughs> to put on the outside of the door that lets kids know what they can do if the blue room is being used and they really wanna use it. Um, my sheet got torn down over here, but I normally have a sheet over here where they can sign up to use the blue room. So if it's being used, they will for sure get a time to use it again. Honestly, it's just like another little small workroom in my classroom and I'm thankful that I have another space that kids can go if they're feeling like it's too overwhelming out here. Okay, then back here, I just have a bunch of storage containers. I'm very thankful that I have so many different storage containers in my classroom. Over here, this file folder organizer thing, this is where I keep all of my like para documents for paraprofessionals. So if there's something they need, it's most likely back here. This is another student work area. And then for the most part, that's it. That's what my classroom looks like. I'm pretty big into visuals. I think it's important for kids to have visuals to help remember the things they need to do, like remembering to clean up. I also have to-do lists that paras can be working on if they need to do something. Sometimes it's hard for adults to know what to do if their student's busy or working on something or gone for the moment. And so this just kind of walks through some ideas. Also, here's a picture that shows that I am a human and not everything is perfect in my classroom. I still haven't made printed sheets for this, but it works. Here's another example of how I use signs in my classroom. I always keep keys up here. Everything in my classroom is locked, like all of my cabinets, the bathroom locks from the outside. So that means whenever you need to open anything, you almost always need to have a key. And so I keep the key up here. I do let kids use keys, but they have to ask a teacher first. Another thing that I do that I feel like helps is I keep all my calm down items right when I walk in. So that way when kids come in frustrated, they can grab a calm down item. They can choose the calm down space that they're gonna end up going to. And then, like I said, all calm down spaces have these little I need a break cards. They fill this out, they take their break, and then once they're done, they're ready to problem solve with the teacher. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I like, I'm really happy that I do in my classroom. I use the whole brain teaching rules and I use these for every single one of my groups and I swear by this. This just makes the expectation so clear for students. I keep all of these I need a break cards near all of my calm down spaces and that's a game changer. This sequence sensory board is really popular in my room. As far as lights, I get a lot of natural daylight so I have my lights off quite often. I have these LED lights hung all around my room those light colors change colors, and then I have the hanging globe lights. These globe lights are like a plasticky bulb and not glass, so if they were to get knocked down or hit, they would not break. That turtle right there is actually a window that a paraprofessional that used to work here painted for me, and having that painted, and so we don't see kids in the hallway, helps with distraction, but it also helps with the privacy of students that might be escalated in here. Here's what I will say. I know that I have purchased a lot of things in my classroom for it to look like this, and I don't think any teacher needs to do that. I chose to do that, and I believe it makes my classroom more calming and welcoming, and I feel like it just creates a home away from home for many of my kids. While I choose to decorate it and spend money on a lot of these things, there's still a lot of things that I have to buy that I shouldn't have to buy that I use directly with kids. And that's just the reality of it. I'm just saying that because I think it's good to spread awareness on all of that. But here's my classroom. Let me know if you have any other questions or things you want to see more in depth. 
I don't know. I love it. It makes me happy being here. I love my job. There's that.